Hi everybody, my name is Dr. Yasmine Flores and welcome to another episode of The Arts at EPCC. With me today is another music major who I'm not sure if we've had him on the show before. No, not before. This okay. is my first time. Okay, <laughs> all right, well welcome. This is Thank Gabriel you. Gonzalez. <laughs> yes, and he is waving to the camera yes. here. So, Gabriel, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yes, this is George. Hello, George. <laughs> yes, George says hello back. He's very quiet. <laughs> and um, so I would like to know, um, I am always fascinated by the student's perspective mm -hmm. of uh, the music department, the school, what, you know, what it's like. And just to kind of tell students and parents and grandparents and sometimes great grandparents, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know what? What experiences await our students walking in the doors, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. So you came here. When was your first semester with us? Uh, in spring. Okay, uh, in the spring. Of, That's right. Yeah, yeah. So it was spring of twenty one. I met you, and you were in my music theory class, my right. music theory one, and um, and you had come from. A pretty strong program already because you knew a lot of music theory. Yes, yes. Okay, where did you graduate high school? Uh, Clint High School. Clint High yes. School. Wow, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. And so, uh, so you learned who taught you music theory? Uh, it was my band director, Anthony Alvarado. Okay. Uh, yeah, he w he was also our music theory teacher uh, my junior and senior year. Wonderful. I've yeah. heard of his name. I. You know what? Maybe I've met him, uh, but I'm terrible with names and faces <laughs> until they say that they're a music major. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I do remember your name. Right? <laughs> like, I don't know why, um, but it's some sort of like trigger in my brain. Yeah. Um, so, so that's really awesome. Well, you come to us obviously from some very fine training, so I can never take the credit for if you learned anything in my class, I think a lot of it was review for you. Uh, I definitely learned things though, for okay, sure. Okay, yeah. good, all right, check. I earned my check that day, <laughs> write it down. Um, so now let's see, what all are you taking this semester? Uh, yeah, I'm taking quite a few classes this semester. Um, I'm taking Music Theory 3, mm -hmm. uh, Sight Singing 3. Uh, I'm taking Personal Lessons with Mr. Harrison for Electric Bass, uh, mm -hmm. with Mr. Castaneda for Upright Bass. Mm -hmm. I'm in the concert band, I'm in choir, and I'm also taking MIDI, uh, MIDI one. With Mr. Towns? With Mr. Towns, yes. Fantastic, and and also a shout out to Daniel Becker, who is the lab assistant yes, and there. Yes, and Dan, oh, yeah. he's yeah. great. <laughs> I know, I know, yeah. he's fantastic. We're very lucky to have Mr. Becker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so now, let's see. Of, of all the classes you've taken so far mm -hmm. here at El Paso Community College, what has been your favorite? Um, I'd have to say, well, I know you told me that I don't have to say music theory, but uh, definitely okay. music theory. <laughs> that is... I always get tickled to hear that. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you, right? I know it is my class is the one I teach, but I, you know, I enjoy teaching that class. Yeah, I really do. And I, I actually asked, we'll get back on topic, I promise. But I actually asked. Uh, my students the other afternoon, and I said, is it time for me to no longer teach this <laughs> class? Because I have my moments where I want to scream a little bit. <laughs> but um, they all shook their head, and I was surprised. I was like, oh, okay, well, I, I will stick with this class, yeah. then. thank you very much. Um, so um, I really enjoy working with you guys, and it's the light bulbs that yes. I see that suddenly everybody understands, and they're like, oh, 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 music that, theory. Right, yeah, <laughs> like suddenly, you know, they understand triads mm -hmm. or they understand seventh chords for the first time and it might be something that they wanted to know and we finally get to it and mm -hmm. all of a sudden they're like, oh, <laughs> and it's that moment when you hear the whole class like, oh, like, oh, now I get yeah. it. This makes sense now. And so it's, it's such a, it's always a beautiful moment in class. So music theory, and then what else do you love? Uh, I really love MIDI class with Mr. Townsend and Dan Becker. Mm -hmm. I mean, that class, I feel I learned a lot in music theory. And um, in our MIDI class where we're able to actually make music, it, mm -hmm. I've been able to put it on to practice. And in fact, in my last project, I was able to write for a symphony or for an orchestra rather. Um, and put a lot of the things that I've learned between you and Mr. Lecker uh, to actual practice, like real world usage of it. So. I mean, it's. I feel like it's taken my musicianship to a whole nother level. Like, That's awesome. I love it so much. It's so creative. It's wonderful. 
Good. Yeah. I'm so happy to hear that. That brings me a lot of joy. <laughs> it really does because, and you're a very good student. You know, all, all the students that I've had on here, whether they're from music or we've had some from theater that have been on here, they've always been a joy to speak to because um, it, it's, it's always fascinating to me because everything is obviously from my perspective and I'm <laughs> old and stodgy and I've been here now for, you know, enough time that I know every crack in every wall right in the t <laughs> we need to paint this and we need to replace that tile and you know it's like it becomes like your second house yeah <laughs> to especially more i think more so to the professors than to the students so um to to see things through fresh eyes <laughs> is always fascinating yeah. to me absolutely so now here's the big dangerous question what are you planning on doing uh as a career uh as a career uh so my major is music theory and composition, which is why I love the music theory class so much, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of things that I can do with that. Um, teaching is, is an option that I would love to do. Um, I would love to influence someone's life, like how my teacher in high school influenced my life. Like, I feel like he really stirred my, my life in this direction. Like, because he was, took the time to teach me music theory, I found what I loved. Um, I would, I have a big dreams of scoring for a Disney film. I would love to score for a Disney okay. film. Okay. I would love to score for a video game as well. Um, okay. Yeah. And just like, yeah, like whatever comes my way, I, I would be more than happy to do it as long as it's with music, you know? That's um, wonderful. Yeah. That's really awesome. And you know what? You're not the only Disney fan. There's a, a freshman in my class. Uh, well, I guess... I don't know if he's classified as a freshman, but he is in my class. He's in my music theory one, and he's a wonderful student. And he wants to perform for Disney. Oh, that would be, yeah. yes. <laughs> and so I, I guess I was just, I never grew up on, on that much Disney when I was little. Oh, right. And so I don't, I don't personally get the fascination with it. I'm like, it's a cartoon, whatever. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, it's more than a cartoon. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's, that's really wonderful. And there's several of you that are like super obsessed with Walt Disney, mm -hmm. like almost my goodness so that's that's very funny to me now so scoring um composing uh walt disney other things other projects are you gonna branch out are you planning on on staying in el paso leaving el paso yeah i do plan on not staying sorry i cut you off okay. a little that's early okay. no i plan on leaving el paso okay. um uh, I've been looking into a few other colleges to continue. Mm -hmm. uh, I would love to get at least my master's in uh -huh. music theory. Sure. Um, of course, I would love to continue if like financially I could, which I'm sure it'll be there, you know, when the time comes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, do, I don't plan on, on staying in El Paso. I would love to come back though, like sure. um, to teach. Like mm -hmm. I said, like, I mean, I'm, I'm from Clint, a very small town outside of, outside of El Paso. So um if somebody who had their masters in music theory was teaching clint and can change my life like i would love to just be that for at least one other person in right. somebody's life you know so yes. yeah i would love to i would love to do that and grow the music community in el paso would be really awesome too uh there's a lot of inspiration like khalid is the first one that comes to mind like mm -hmm. um he just really reps el paso you know and all of his songs he sings 915 like and he's globally famous he's mm -hmm. not just like somebody that we know here or somebody that we know in the states like everywhere they know him you know right so, yeah um, he's past my generation so yeah I, yeah <laughs> i see him on instagram and and it just reminds me of you know i mentioned earlier heavy d and the boys <laughs> heavy d and the boys as a little old already <laughs> um but that was that was my era i mean MC Hammer, Young MC. Mm. Um, oh my goodness, I'm I'm trying to think back to the rappers. Tone Loke oh, right. uh, is another one <laughs> that you know. And so when I look at some of these pop artists now, I'm like, that's this generation's so and so, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so, I, and you're absolutely right. This is probably the first time. Gosh. I almost want to say since Marty Robbins. Yeah, honestly, probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that El Paso has been put on an international map in that respect. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I, he, I also compare him to Pitbull. Oh, right. Because Pitbull always talks about Miami, but my gosh, Miami is already international. Right, right? yeah. Miami, 
Y'all don't need any help, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows about Miami, yeah. the palm trees, you know, and the major seven chord that we yeah. always <laughs> la, right. da, da, da. Yes, exactly. Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, so I, I agree with you. I think it's really awesome that he's done that for El Paso, mm. absolutely. So shout out. To, to Khalid, to yeah. Khalid right, <laughs> yeah. if he dares to watch this little cable show. <laughs> right. um, so that's awesome. Well, and so you are, um, you, you have, I tell you, hang on to these big dreams because I think that you're definitely on the right track to, to doing these <laughs> things. And you have, you have something that I try to describe to a lot of my students. And I think people that are my age, I'm in my early 40s, if, if some of those folks already have high schoolers and even college students as children. And so let me ask you a question. Now I might, I might kind of put you on the spot. It's a little outside of music, but it's every generation thinks that the next generation is lazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got accused of being lazy, right? right? And maybe at the time I was, maybe in my twenties I was, okay, I'll give you that. Um, but it's like every generation doesn't understand the next generation. So I'm, I'm the tail end of generation X, mm -hmm. right? I'm not a millennial and I do see that disparity between me and the, and the two new coordinators, uh, Dr. Grola and Dr. Vasquez, they are millennials. Mm -hmm. I'm not. You turn on a computer, if it's a Mac, I'm done. I'm like, I'm like nope, check please, I'm out, right? right. Um, so, and then you have to like press the pad to yeah. get it to click, I don't know. Um, so what do you, what do you think, this is, this is, and maybe it's just from my old stodgy perspective, right? Where's the fire in the person sometimes? It, it, and and this is kind of and again I'm kind of putting you on the spot here, but I see fire in you. <laughs> Thank I you. see this drive, like you want to do it. You already have the plan. You have the goal. You're figuring out the path. You're cutting the weeds out of the path. You're like, <laughs> oh, stumbling block. Let me go this way, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and and I love that. That's one of the things that and you and you're one of several students that I see like that. You know, as I mentioned, the other guy that is also obsessed with Walt Disney, he's very much like that. His name is Jesus. And um, it's all about like, oh, well, this is what I want to do. And this is what I'm going to do. And, and, and there's, you can see it in mm -hmm. a person's eyes that, that nothing is going to get in the way, right? Mm -hmm. when, uh, and then there's students that don't have that. What, what cultivated that for you? I think that for me, um, I know I keep talking about my high school, uh, my high school teacher. It yeah. was a lot of that, but um, I think that what really set me into it was um, there was a time after high school where I just went to go work and I got a bunch of different jobs. I thought that uh, money would help keep me happy after high school, you know, mm -hmm. um, and I think that there was a point where I was at my lowest that I just realized that wasn't cutting it for me anymore. What I needed to do was I needed to pursue what I loved. And I think that um, a lot of people can relate to that, at least from what I've heard from my classmates in Music Theory 3 is, um, uh, because I've met a lot of them this year. Yeah. And um, a lot of them kind of went through similar struggles as I did. Like we kind of veered off, did different things after high school. And mm -hmm. um, that's where the passion, or that's where that fire really comes from is like, at some point you have to realize that it's not pursuing what you love is not gonna fulfill you. Like you can have all the money in the world and if you do what you hate, like what joy does it bring, you know? Exactly. Yeah, so I think right. that that's what it comes down to. I think some people like me really need to get hit with life, you know, real right. hard. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think that we just, we, yeah. like me personally, that was it. I just needed to get hit right on the head. Uh, like, oh my God, finances and taxes, taxes, oh my God. Right. But, you know, uh -huh. and it was like, oh, wow, this is not fun. Like, you know, right. if, if, if I'm going to be doing all those adult stuff, I might as well also do what I love at the same time. And, and that's where that fire came from was like not taking anything less and I th and I think that a lot of my classmates can relate to that too yeah is not taking anything less 
Um, That's wonderful. I wish, you know, I might play this video for my might play this video for my class. Like, <laughs> um, so yeah, I love that so much, and and I have my thoughts and theories. But sometimes there's times for me to bite my tongue, uh, and there's other times where I can, you know, be a little freer. Um, but it, I will say, it always seems like the best students are those that are not fresh out of mm -hmm. high school yeah. now you will get some high schoolers a dual yeah. credit early college or 18 years old fresh out that do know mm -hmm. and, I, and i was one of those rarities like right. I, I not to brag but <laughs> at 18 i kind of figured it out at 15. Mm -hmm. and it's funny because my revelation came at 14 when i started at the silva uh, health mm. magnet high school mm -hmm. i started there in 19 here we go back in the 1900s let's put it that way <laughs> and I I enjoyed studying medicine and it was like, oh, okay, this is the clavicle, these are the scapulars, these are the da da da, and I was memorizing all the parts of the body, right? And it was like, that was fascinating. And I, and I really, I loved the concept of helping humanity mm -hmm. in a dramatic way because a doctor, hello, yeah. you like saved their life. L Good, you know, yeah, right, yeah. like <laughs> literally, right? And so I, I, I liked that concept and I said, this is a great purpose, this is great. But then at night, I would hear the, on Friday nights, I would hear the local marching band. <laughs> and I was like, ah! <laughs> and I would look at my clarinet and my clarinet was there in the corner starting to collect dust. No, no. <laughs> and so I dropped mm -hmm. Silva and I left and I said, no, no, I'm coming back to that thing, to that clarinet, right? right? And then at that point, starting at around the age of 15, for me, it was a slap of, I heard this piece and it's the dumbest little piece. I think I've told this story before. The dumbest little piece on clarinet, it was called Arabesques by Paul Jean Jean. <laughs> and he was a French composer out of the Paris Conservatory, one of the composers that they churned out because mm. the Paris Conservatory churned out all these little these little like one hit wonders basically right. out of um you know that wrote things for clarinet or violin whatever it was and it's this two pager that you could play a high schooler could play little charming and it starts off na da da di -a, da da di -a. and i thought it was the most beautiful thing i'd ever heard <laughs> in my whole life and i said oh my goodness that that that's is, it that's it yeah that is amaretto cheesecake <laughs> followed by chocolate mousse right yeah like like that is it and and why wouldn't you want to be living in a lap of luxury mm -hmm. all the time and so to me that's what music was for so many years it was brahms it was um you know uh some of mozart's works it was uh all these delicious things in the clarinet weber which is just Weber is also very indulgent mm -hmm. um, for clarinet players, right? Mm -hmm. And so for me, that's what it was. And I was just living it up. I was <laughs> learning that recitative and palaka <laughs> that we all know on clarinet. And so, um, but I, I've discovered that other people don't have this realization early on. Mm -hmm. So I like that you had to go and work and you had to discover it for yourself. And you had, as you said, that life kind of slapped you yeah. in the face, yeah. like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that so much. So, um, and, and the other important thing you said, and I'm gonna talk to the parents for a moment, and I'm gonna say, he said it, it came out of his mouth. I didn't tell him to say it, right? It's that you have to follow what you love. Because if you do that, it's not work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and one of the one of my favorite questions that I get asked at EPCC is, um, "Why do you always work so hard?" People say that to mm -hmm. me all the time. I think I don't remember who was in my office earlier, and they said, "Yeah, you and and several of the music faculty are always busy. You guys are always <laughs> doing stuff. We always see you running around up and down the stairs. I can't run anymore up and down the <laughs> stairs. I kind of like, you know, pull myself up the stairs. But um, 
But yeah, it's always up and down, up and down. I mean, you can hear our heels, click, clack, click, clack, yeah. click, here we go, you know, and oh, hi, and hello, how are you? Okay, we're stapling this, we're stapling that, we're taking it down, we're taking it down, yeah. <laughs> you know? And it's that, because it's not work. Mm -hmm. Because I'm having fun doing it. Right. And I have, I, it brings me so much joy to clean, I know, now this is my OCD, to clean things, to keep things organized. Uh, you And you know this about me a little bit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, and I, so my office right now is making me crazy because there's junk everywhere, but it's stock, chock full of some, some posters that we're posting that are gonna be helpful to the community, mm -hmm. et cetera. Yeah. The work doesn't, is not work mm -hmm. when you love it. Right. It's almost like a nice little um, margin where what it seems like hard work to other people uh, when you're doing what you love is kind of like the bare minimum to you almost. It's like, right. like hard work to you is like not what hard work is to people that are doing what they don't love, you know? Right. Yeah. Bingo. Mm -hmm. and, and I see that. And, and I kind of think to myself, you know, and there's, there's subjects that I'm not thrilled about <laughs> sometimes when I've, that I've taught in the past where I kind of go like, oh, <laughs> you know, but um, when I, music theory one, I love. Music appreciation is, I think I need um, a fresh approach. Mm. I think I teach my students and, and the, the further, so imagine I started teaching at 30. Mm -hmm. And back then I was Miss Cool, right? <laughs> I was like, oh, we're going to take it with the young professor. We're going to take it with the new professor, yeah. right? And now I'm becoming the stodgy, old, crinkly, <laughs> little crusty thing. Not in the even. <laughs> I don't think so at all. I, I still think you're Miss Cool. Oh, that means anything. Thank you. I appreciate that. Maybe I should invite you to music appreciation. <laughs> um, because, and, and so it's so interesting to me because a lot of what they request is I think they want to find a middle ground. Mm -hmm. So the irony there is, of course, they're coming to music from the pop side. They're coming to music like somebody mentioned Nas. Nas oh, yeah, or Lil Nas. Yes. Sure. Okay. <laughs> All right. And so we typed that in, right? And we played a portion of the video because today, uh, random tangent, we were going over um, basically sampling oh, okay. of classical music in pop music, right, right, and so I think it's one of his tunes. Mm -hmm. I can maybe, is yeah, that what it's called. Okay, yes, and it's the for Elise at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they were just they were thrilled to see that <laughs> because it was a pop artist using classical. So it was that happy middle ground, right? right. Because if I'm just constantly living over here and Mozart, Haydn, Beethoven, these are the classics, mm -hmm. and, and I don't meet them halfway, they check out. Right, yeah. And, and, it's, and it's so frustrating to me, so I think, so here's a question for you. You have friends that are not music majors, mm -hmm. right? How do you interest them in their, how do you interest them in what you do? Uh, uh, I don't know, I think that, um... I just kind of talk about it like I think yeah. they just kind of listen to me and it's so outside of anything that they know like because mm -hmm. music is really its own world like yeah I mean you have to learn how to read it it's mm -hmm. got its own notations almost like knowing a different language essentially right, right? Sure. and um, even more so learning how to write music for instruments and learning how there's a call and response it's like truly almost alien to people that don't know music you know yeah um, and so I think because I just, I just kind of talk about the things that I do and because it's so far out of what they are used to, to them, they're just like, oh, wow, you do all of that. Like you make music on the computer and how do you even do that stuff? You know, like right. it, it's, um, it's, it's really not that hard. I mm -hmm. think, especially when I'm, I'm taking a lot of very interesting classes this, this semester, at least uh -huh. to me. Right. Um, like I mentioned, especially with Mr. Towns and Dan Becker in MIDI one, um, that I think it's really easy to just talk about it and it's just by nature interesting, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, I don't think that that was a great answer, but that was my answer. <laughs> sure. So what I just dissect from that is that I think that we gravitate toward people with similar interests. Mm -hmm. 
So you maybe you don't talk to a lot of people that are criminology majors right, no. <laughs> or uh, cosmetology. Yeah. Or and and whereas that's what's in my class. And so it's always very interesting. So I, I will pose this challenge to you. Okay. Because one day you're going to be 42. Mm. Thank you very much. <laughs> and <laughs> you're going to be teaching music appreciation, mm. I think, to some students uh, 20, 20, almost 20 years, more than 20 years yes. down the line, <laughs> because you're very young. <laughs> and, um, and so as you're teaching, keep that in mind. Yes. Because then suddenly you're going to look back at this interview you're gonna, and, and it'll be there for posterity's yeah. sake <laughs> on YouTube, right? Um, maybe as a hologram at that point. But, um, you know, just kind of thinking about how are you going to reach this young crowd mm -hmm. um, of, of students that at that point are listening to heaven knows what oh, yeah. in 20 years, yeah, right? right? I mean, it, it's funny because pop music has not changed all that much but I think I think that in the last couple of years that it's really starting to suddenly evolve again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, I agree. Um, and so uh, you know, every decade brings about new technology, new concepts, and whatnot. Um, and so start start thinking about that and how you're yeah. going to make those connections. Because let me tell you. <laughs> Well, um, I have to say, Gabriel, it's always a joy to talk to you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and pick your brain. And uh, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Oh, thank you and for having me. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And so shout out to Clint. Yes. Right? Woo, repping Clint right here. <laughs> okay. What is what is their mascot? A lion. Where are the lions? Clint Lions. The Clint Lions. To all of you Clint Lions out there. <laughs> Here is one of your former graduates who has decided to major in music. And if you are interested in music, please send me an email. My name is Yasmin Flores, Y-F-L-O-R-E-1-4 at epcc.edu. And you can certainly also email my two colleagues, Dr. Garola and Dr. Vasquez in the music program. And we would love to have you and come by. We have a couple of actually, um, days where we're going to be advising as well in both the fall and spring. So check that out and you can find that on Instagram at EPCC Music, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and we have some YouTube videos up as well. Mm -hmm. Gabriel, as always, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Yes. And you'll have to be on the show again. Oh, I would love to. Okay, <laughs> <Yes>. awesome. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.